Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a system of equations. We have x plus 1 over y equals 2, y plus 1 over z equals 3, and z plus 1 over x equals 4. And we are going to solve for x, y, and z. The product x, y, z, that's what we're trying to find. Now, could we find the individual values for x, y, and z? We can also look at it. But my first thought when I saw this problem was basically just make a common denominator and write three equations as polynomials. Like xy plus 1 is equal to 2y, yz plus 1 is equal to 3z, and then zx plus 1 is equal to 4x. And there's a couple different things you can do from here. You can go ahead and multiply all these equations together. The left-hand side is going to give you a lot of terms such as x, y, z quantity squared. And then you're going get, to be getting terms like x, y, x, z, y, z. And you're going to get a 1. You're going to get um, x, y uh, times y, z, which is going to give you x squared, y, z. And then when you get those terms... You can actually go ahead and do the following, like y squared xz and z squared xy. You can go ahead and factor out xyz. That's going to give you x plus y plus z. So we're kind of dealing with different uh, types of, you know, of, uh, sums here. We have the product, kind of thinking about Vieta's formulas. We have the two-way uh, products being added, and we have the sum of xyz. On the right-hand side, you're going to get, if you multiply these together, you're going to get 24xyz. Again, we get 24 times the product. So that's one way to look at the problem. Another way to look at this problem is using, using a different idea. Notice that each of these ex equations have 1 in them. So that's a really nice thing that makes the problem easier. So you can go ahead and set each of these equal to each other. So like, for example, 1 can be written as 2y minus xy, or 3z minus yz, or 4x minus zx. Make sense? They're all equal to 1, so they're equal. And then we can go ahead and kind of factor out things like y times 2 minus x is equal to z times 3 minus y, and then this is x times 4 minus z. So what do you do from here? You can kind of go ahead and set each of these equal to something like, let's say, you know, you can use a K for one of these. Anyways, so kind of trying to take advantage of ratios. That, that's what I was thinking. Or if you want, you can set the whole thing equal to K, even though it's equal to 1. Actually, I could probably use 1 because I, that's already a numerical value. And then from here, you could possibly isolate each one, like write the Y as 1 over 2 minus X, write the Z as 1 over 3 minus Y, so on and so forth, and then start plugging into one of these equations. For example... If you are able to get uh, y in terms of x and z in terms of y, which means you can also get z in terms of x. So z can be written as 1 over 3 minus y, which is 1 over 2 minus x. And then by making a common denominator, both of these are going to be in terms of x. And you can take those y and z values and plug in here. That's going to give you an equation in x, and you can solve it. That's going to be a crazy endeavor, don't you think? But let's go ahead and make a common denominator here to see what that approach looks like. And then I'm going to show you an alternative approach, okay? If you make a common denominator first, it's going to be 3 times that, so 6 minus 3x minus 1, which is 5 minus 3x. And then that's going to be divided by 2 minus x, but 2 minus x needs to go here because it's going to be flipped and multiplied. Uh-oh. And so we're going to put the 2 minus x here. So that's going to be the z value, right? And y is already known, so let's go ahead and write the equation that contains y and z. y, z plus 1 is 3z. Okay. I'm going to replace y with 1 over 2 minus x, and z with 2 minus x divided by 5 minus 3x, plus 1 is equal to 3z, which is, again, 3 times 2 minus x divided by 5 minus 3x. Make sense? So this equation is just in x, and we should be able to solve it. I think this is going to turn into a quadratic equation, correct me if I'm wrong, and then from there you can solve for the x value. Obviously, let's do a little bit of calculation here, or we can think of making a common denominator because this is going to be 2 minus x. Oh, by the way, when I multiply these, these two are going to cancel out, leaving us with something even simpler. 
and that's going to be 1 over 5 minus 3x plus 1. So it's going to be 5 plus 1, 6 minus 3x over 5 minus 3x. And then this is going to be 6 minus 3x. Well, that didn't help, did it? <laughs> because I kind of ended up getting something like 0 equals 0, 1 equals 1. Okay, that didn't help at all, but at least I tried, right? Okay, cool. I didn't know what it was going to end up uh, like. So I just g gave it a try and maybe I made a mistake or maybe there's a better way to approach it. But I'm pretty sure by substitution, we should be able to solve it because there are three variables and three equations. So we should be able to solve for x, y, and z separately and then find the product x, y, z. But guess what? You don't have to do it because you can find x, y, z without actually finding x, y, and z separately, okay? And that brings us to the second method. So let me re rewrite the system. Okay, this is my system. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and multiply these equations together. Now you might be questioning, uh, why do we do that? And my answer would be, why not? You kind of sometimes with systems, you don't really know what to do. You have to try everything. Their product is going to be though 2 times 3 times 4, which is equal to 24. Let's go ahead and expand it and see what this product looks like. When I distribute this, obviously there are three terms. So to be able to do it easier, I'm going to do the following. First, I'm going to hold on to this term and distribute these two. y times c is yz plus y times 1 over x plus 1 plus 1 over xz. And then I'm going to distribute this over that. x, y, z plus x is going to cancel out. When you multiply x by y over x, you're going to get y. And then x. And then x is going to cancel out. And you're going to get 1 over z. Now that's done. Let's go ahead and distribute this. 1 over y. y is going to cancel out. We're going to end up with z. Plus y is going to cancel out again. We're going to get 1 over x. And then 1 over y. And finally, you're going to get 1 over x, y, z. And of course, this product is equal to 24, right? Awesome. Let's go ahead and rearrange the terms a little bit to make it uh, look nicer. We have x, y, z. We have x plus y plus z. We have 1 over x plus 1 over y plus 1 over z, the sum of reciprocals. And finally, we have the reciprocal of the product, 1 over x, y, z, and the whole thing is equal to 24. Now again, you might be questioning, is this helpful at all? Kind of looks messy, right? We have the product, we have its reciprocal, we have the sum, we have the sum of reciprocals, so on and so forth. But hold on to this for now, because the next thing we're going to do is going to actually help us. So remember, what we did first was multiply these together, right? What were they? x plus 1 over y equals 2, y plus 1 over z equals 3, and z plus 1 over x equals 4. Now, we're going to go ahead and add them. Why? Because it's going to give us the sum of x, y, z and the sum of their reciprocals, which is something that is going to be very helpful. Okay? So we're going to add these all together. And 2 plus 3 plus 4 is going to be 5 plus 4, which is 9. Awesome. Now, take a look and take a good look because this is x plus y plus z plus 1 over x plus 1 over y plus 1 over z equals 9. And I want to copy this equation, but when I copy it, I want to write the x, y, z sum first. So I'm going to start with this, x plus y plus z. And then next, I'm going to use the sum of the reciprocals, which is these three terms. You see, I can add them in any order I want because of the uh, commutativity. And then I'm going to add these two guys, x, y, z, and 1 over x, y, z at the end. And it kind of makes sense because I'm trying to find x, y, z, and it's better if I keep those guys together. And this is equal to 24. Remember, we found that before, right? Now, here's the fun part. This whole thing is included here. Look at that. So, this is equal to 9. Isn't that awesome? So, what that means is, this part is equal to 15 because 9 plus 15 is 24. Or 24 minus 9 is 15. So now we got x, y, z plus 1 over x, y, z equals 15. And remember, we're trying to find x, y, z. Let's call that p for product. And we get 
p plus 1 over p equals 15. p squared plus 1 is equal to 15p. And I'm not going to say 2p and, you know, the other thing here. That's not going to be an appropriate joke anyways. p squared minus 15p plus 1 equals 0. Remember, we're looking for p. We need to find p, and we're finding it from a quadratic equation. And this is what it's going to be. p is going to be negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 225, minus 4ac, which is 4, and it's going to be 221. And what is the square root of 221? Is 221 prime? That's a good question. So a little bit of number theory here. If you think about it, it's probably divisible by 7, but I don't think so. It could be divisible by 13, but when I check 13, I can subtract 260 minus that, which is going to be 39. And yes, 221 is divisible by, actually, it's kind of like this. It's 260 minus 39. So if you take out a 13, you're going to get 20 minus 3, which is 17. Great. So this is 13 times 17, but guess what? That's not going to help you because none of them are perfect squares. So it's just going to stay like that. But basically, these are going to be the values. By the way, 15 is greater than uh, root 221 because uh, 15 squared is 225. Therefore, both solutions are positive. Why is that important? Because I think x, y, z here are all positive, right? Is that true? Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.